Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn how to navigate review and customize our interface. In Bluebeam Review, we can customize our interface. I've already done so, but I'm going to show you what the interface looks like by default. And I'll do that by going to the Review dropdown on the upper left, mousing over Profiles, and clicking on Review. This profile is the default profile when you first install the program. Now, this profile maximizes viewing space. You can see that compared to the other profile, we can see the drawing a lot clearer and there's more to see. At the same time, we have some issues. While we have some basic shortcuts on the right side and no shortcuts at the top of our screen, all of our major side panels are now on the left side, instead of being split on the left and the right. As a result, I can only open one side panel at once. So if I wanted to look at properties and tools at the same time, and if I wanted to customize a tool, I technically could. I can select a tool in the tool chest and then switch to the properties panel, and it'll now show the name of the tool on the top right here, and it'll allow me to change some of its properties. But what if I wanted to view both of them at the same time? And there are certain instances, such as using the measurements panel, where you'll definitely want to do that. Well, all you need to do is switch your profile. So if you're starting off and this is your first time using Review, you can go to the Review dropdown, mouse over Profiles, and you can switch to the Review Advanced Profile. This is a great profile to start off with as a template. Now, I've modified this one a little bit as well because I've trained people with this profile a bit, but your profile, if you switch to this, should look very similar to my Review Advanced Profile. The only major difference will be that at the top of the screen, I've turned on certain functions and tools that I think are very important and relevant to most workflows. So we can see that there's two rows of shortcuts up here. And on the right side and the left side, we've already split our major side panels. So properties is open on the right, and now tools are open on the left. So when I go to select a tool, it allows me to modify it in properties right here. This is very, very nice and useful and now we can see what we're modifying at the same time. So let's look at the tools at the top of our screen now. We can essentially turn them on or off very quickly by mousing over next to them and just right clicking. Now this will show us almost all of the tools that are available in the program. And the ones that I have turned on here are the ones that I recommend. Now, if you don't need to sign any documents, you don't need to have digital signature turned on, but it only has two buttons, these two right here. So if you are going to be signing, using the add signature field would be very, very nice. The signed document is a quicker way to do it, but I recommend using add signature field, and I'll explain why in my tutorial for signing documents. Let's right click again next to one of our tool groups, and you can see that I've turned on things like edit, which is not turned on by default. And we can see that edit includes the undo button, redo button, et cetera, et cetera. So these are very commonly used buttons that are very useful to have in the program. Now, we can also customize which buttons appear in these tool groups because they're not labeled. So I would have to test and see which ones are associated with the names here by right clicking and then turning edit off, for example, and just watching my toolbar as I do it. And there it is. The undo button is gone along with all the other buttons that were separated by these vertical dots that are essentially the group placeholders. So I'm going to turn on edit once again, right click and then edit. And now you can see that the vertical dots start on the left side of a group of tools. And on the right side of the last group of tools, there are no vertical dots. So if I click and hold these vertical dots here, I can now drag and move this tool group anywhere I want. I can also move them to another line or I can move them down to a third line by themselves. Now I'm going to move this tool group in particular to the second line and you'll see something interesting happen. Most of the tools are now hidden. This one in particular is not because I moved it in between these two tools. But we have the, some tools that are hidden and we can tell because we can see this square with an arrow facing down. This is going to be very common if you have a side panel that has functions such as the measuring panel and there isn't enough space to show all of these functions. So if I was to take this side panel, for example, and click on this line here, it's the border between the panel and the viewing space and you'll see that it highlights in blue. If I click and hold on this, I can now drag this out and we can see more tool groups and there. Now we can see all of them because this arrow is now gone. And as soon as I drag this a little bit to the right, 
it will hide that last tool and it'll show this arrow. And if I click on this arrow, it merely shows the tools that are hidden. And the same goes for these arrows here. It shows these four tools that are hidden. And an entire group of tools is actually hidden right here. Just so happens to be those signing tools that we just talked about. So I don't want my measuring panel or my side panels to be that big because I do want to maximize my viewing space while also maximizing on functionality. So I'm just going to drag this to the right a little bit. I typically don't resize these panels too often. I leave them as big as I need them to be. For the tool chest, for example, what I've done is, is I've taken the slider down here where we can see a small triangle and a large triangle. And there's a dot right here that we can click and we can essentially make our tool icons bigger or smaller. By default, they're actually very small, so it's hard to identify what tool is what. You'd have to kind of memorize what they are or squint. <laughs> so we're actually just going to click and hold this and drag this to the right. I already had mine resized, and I typically like to see four tools at once, so I just took my bar here and I resized it accordingly. Now, I don't need to use my side panels right now, so I'm just going to click on the icon that's currently active for a panel. So the measuring panel is blue and currently active, and I can collapse it. There's no need to take a side panel and drag it to the right or the left to simply hide it. And I've seen a lot of people drag it like this, where it's barely visible, and then they try to open a side panel and they don't know why they can't see their functions. So I like to keep it at a fixed state. Roughly this size is good for me right now on my screen resolution, which is 1080p. So I'm just going to click on this button again to collapse it, and I can click on the tool chest one, which is currently active. If I clicked on another side panel, it would simply replace the one that's currently on that side. So I can look at my thumbnails, file access, layers, etc., etc. So I'm just going to click on the layers one to collapse it. Now let's go back to the top of our screen where we do have these tools that are currently hidden. And I don't like to click more than once on shortcuts, so I'd rather just click on the shortcut and use it and not click on the drop down and then click on the shortcut. And as you can see, as soon as you move your mouse away from that, it kind of auto hides itself and disappears again. So it's very, very sensitive. So I don't like these drop downs. So I'm simply going to move my tools so that I only have about two lines of tools. That's typically all I need. I'm going to reorder this tool group right here. So all I did was I just clicked and held it and I moved it down and in between other tool groups and then up. And you can experiment with that and see how it works. And I still have plenty of space for a few extra tools up here. For example, you could turn on order. It's actually quite useful. It's these four buttons here. And you can access order by right clicking on a markup, but these allow you to essentially bring markups in front or behind other markups. And I believe I covered that in another tutorial. So let's right click on these one more time. Are there any other recommendations that I have? No, this looks pretty good, especially for my resolution. I do have a little bit of extra space, but I don't need to fill it up right now. Now, I'm going to show you how we can add extra icons up here. There's one that I've already added, which is the Save As button, and it's this floppy disk with a pencil. And it's not there by default. However, I'm noticing now that I haven't added the Paste in Place button. So we're going to add that button right now. Let's customize our toolbars by going to the Tools dropdown and then mousing over Toolbars. We can see those same groups of tools that we saw earlier and at the top, we can see three different kinds of toolbars. These are considered major toolbars in the program. And by default, the status bar is not turned on. So you'll see that if I turn it off, the word ready down here and these buttons down here will all disappear. So I'm going to turn that off now. So I recommend that everyone turns this on because it is an extremely useful bar. It will take up just a little bit of viewing space, but the functions down here can be toggled and are extremely useful in many situations. And this word ready is actually a set of instructions. To demonstrate that, if I was to use the line tool, it's now going to tell me a little bit about how to use the tool in particular. It says to select a point and then drag the mouse to end the point of release. And look at this, holding shift will snap. If I didn't know that, then I was just taught that if I click to make a line and if I hold the shift key, I can now create perfectly straight lines, lines at 45 degree angles, and lines that draw up and down like this. So it's really, really nice to have those set of instructions, especially when it's your first time using the program. And this tutorial is definitely for people who are first using the program and want to optimize their interface and learn how to navigate it effectively. Let's go back to our tools dropdown and mouse over toolbars. And here we can also see that there is a customize button down here. Let's click that and let's look into how it works. So this dialog for customizing our toolbars can be a bit overwhelming at first, but don't worry, it's actually very simple. We'll start from the upper left right here. 
First, we're going to choose which tools that are available in the program and which ones are under a certain category. So in particular, we're looking for paste in place. And I know that that tool is part of the edit category. So I'm going to switch from file to edit. And all the commands for edit are now available to me right here, including paste in place, which is right here. Now we're going to go to the upper right and we'll go to toolbar. These are the actual toolbars that are turned on in our profile, not necessarily all of the different functions that are available in the program, which are found under categories and commands. So we're going to scroll down just a little bit. Let's click on edit in this list. Make sure not to click on the box because because we don't want to turn it off here. We just want to select it so that the items below will now reflect the toolbar that we've chosen. Now that we have our items area ready, we can select paste in place on the left side. Use this arrow right here to add a command to our items. Here it is, but I want it to be right after the paste command so that they're side by side. So I'm going to use these blue arrows right here, and I'm just going to simply click them until paste in place is now next to paste. I can also use the red button to delete different commands if I need to, but I don't recommend doing that. You can simply turn them off if there are duplicates. A good example of duplicates is we can see that the flatten icon, this yellow icon here, is found in two different tool groups. It's actually also found in the edit tool group, but it's currently turned off. So I'm actually going to go and figure out which of these tool groups are associated with either of these flatten commands and get rid of one of them. That way I can save some space. Now I don't know exactly which one is which, so I'm going to have to do some experimentation. It's not document management. It is document, and document happens to be this toolbar up here because these items match. So I don't need flatten in this, doc in this tool group, so I'm simply going to turn it off. And we've made our necessary changes. We now have paste in place. We've now gotten rid of the extra flatten. So we can click OK. And there it is. The extra flatten icon is gone. Paste in place is now available to us. And we've really optimized our tools at the top of our screen. This is the end of the first part of our series on the interface and navigation of Bluebeam Review 20. Please look for the next part of our series that discusses preferences in review.